Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, welcome, welcome to the space. Let me just do a sound check first so to make sure I don't talk for half an hour and nobody can hear me. Um, hi, can, can everybody hear me? Can good you give morning, me a, good afternoon, a, good evening, depending on where A five, something, something, uh, yeah, Any anything you can... Give me react. That's what I'm looking for. That's the word I'm looking for. Can you give me a, a react on the uh, excellent cyber lead? It's great to have you back. I know it's um, you know, it's been maybe a good week since we had a chat, but I, it's it's time to dive a little bit deeper in, into everything you've got going on. It's it, and I've nailed the name this time as well. So that's a, that's a great start. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, I can. Uh, thank you uh, for for having us back. This is a uh... It's awesome and can't wait to dive a little deeper. It's pretty cool. Well, yeah, absolutely. And it's um once again it's it's such a good uh it's such a good experience having so many amazing projects on here, obviously, to collaborate with us. And I'd like to uh introduce as well um Ina. She's a part of what I would call the Swiss Army knife of the uh Layer One X team. So uh, even if you want to give give a, a quick shout out in it, it's uh, over to you and you can do some intros for the projects as well while we just wait for, I think, Red Curry to jump up. Well, hello, guys. Over to you. Um, I hope you can hear me. Uh, also, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Um, delighted. Good to go. Perfect. Delighted to be here. Uh, welcome, everyone, to yet another episode of um, Layer One X's very own X Talks podcast on everything um, interoperability. So I'm joining the host team and I'm so happy about it. Um, today is my first, very first time um, when I'm joining Joe on this journey. So yeah, and today we have two absolutely wonderful protocols uh, to shed the light on um, we are waiting for Caspar to join us speaker. Oh, he just joined. Perfect. All right. So we have already partnered up with uh, one of the guests um, and um, they're absolutely amazing. We would like to welcome Red Curry, um, a great innovative digital currency, uh, all backed by commercial real estate. And we also um, just recently became friends with Cyberlet also amazing project, um, a technology company built by gamers for gamers. So welcome guys. And uh, over to Joe. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you here as well. I know I realized the uh, first time on a space is, is, is a, is a real experience too, especially if you jump on and nobody can hear you, uh, from, from experience. That's, that's pretty garbage, but we can hear you loud and clear, and it's one, it's absolutely wonderful to have you here with us. Uh, so let's um, let's dive straight in. I know that we've probably done a, a couple of little intros before, but maybe just give me a, a one-liner from you guys to get us up to speed with where you're at as a project, as an example, like what you do. If you were to encompass the elevator pitch me, what exactly is it you do so that everybody in the audience has a, a quick overscope of what uh, what you're about? Uh, who wants to kick off? Casper, um, Cyberlead? Either one's good to go. As you wish, Cyberlead. Maybe they could lead. Uh, do you want me to start? Is that is that what you're saying? As you wish, yeah. Sure. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Jeffrey Monis, co-founder of Cyberlead. A um, little bit about us. Uh, we're a massive social application. We have competitive features for gamers embedded with an AI anti-cheat technology and biometric player verification. We started this journey to help stop the plague of cheating in online games and finally create a level playing field for all. All right. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, like I said, a perfect elevator pitch. Uh, over to you, Casper. Sure, thank you. Um, so for us, uh, we we started looking at the, the world and how to how to change it for better. And I think and we think that the better world starts with better money, one that cannot be printed endlessly at will, is safe and accessible and is stable. So that's where we created Red Curry, which is a real estate backed currency providing inflation resistant means of payment. Uh, so basically, we are democratizing access to hard, secure money for everyone. 
So that is banked or underbanked. Uh, I'm Casper. Um, I'm co-founder and, and CTO for Red Curry. Oh, fantastic. Um, and, and both super innovative ideas. Uh, you know, I think that's one of the really amazing things about Web3 is we're pushing the boundaries of what's what's possible and what's capable uh, inside the technological world. And, you know, you guys have amazing projects right at the forefront of that in terms of, you know, community, but also in, in terms of what the capabilities are into real world application. Um, so just just on that, knowing you've just given us a quick intro. Uh, so what is it specifically that makes either of your projects unique um, in your respective industries? So we at Cyberly, we're unique because we're create like we're fixing a big problem for gamers. Um, and that's kind of like this big segmentation of gamers. It's kind of like everything is spread across the internet. You have TikTok, you have YouTube, you have Twitter, you have this, you have that. And there's not really any of these social platforms that really are focused on gaming. Or are they trying to create any type of ecosystem or creator economy for the gamers that exist? So it's just a bunch of more places for everybody to check instead of having everything kind of in one spot. So we're kind of trying to make something, a social platform that's so easy and intuitive to learn. And then at the same time, the competitive features are just caked into that. So it's intuitive. So you can just create a team, invite your friends, join the tournaments. And there's not like this huge, like I have to discover what to do and learn a whole nother thing. It's just very easy and simple. Um, essentially like creating a team is a few clicks at this point it's pretty cool all right thanks and from uh, from red Curry's side i mean we we started looking at um money as what we use today and then uh so whether these are quote-unquote stable currencies like euro or dollar which are not really stable considering debasement and inflation and uh, the global monetary policy. And then we looked at the crypto space where we see the digital twin of these, right? We see Tether making USDT or Circle making USDC or EuroC, but they're nothing more than digital twins of uh, um, existing uh, fiat currencies. And you know, we, we know the issue with, with these. And so there are alternatives like Bitcoin, which was uh, supposed to be and maybe it will someday be um, an alternative currency, but it has its problems. Um, so the, the key one being volatility. So the reason why uh, Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency is not used as a means of payments is that the merchants don't know the, the value tomorrow, right? Um, Red Curry stands apart really from the fact that we back everything with commercial real estate, which is denominated in Euro. So you know the value tomorrow. And when we use prime commercial real estate, then the value can be quite well predicted. And uh, while we retain uh, the, the behavior of money, so it, it, it is built on blockchain, so it behaves, it works like any other currency. So it's easy to use, it's easy to accept and the transact on, but it, we, we retain that uh, uh, the value uh, of it um through backing it with with uh, real estate yeah absolutely fantastic answers from both um it's such different dynamics too in terms of obviously what you're both tackling and knowing you're both in the same you know in the same broad space of um you know what what we would classify web3 uh that, that's amazing uh inner any input absolutely yes um Thank you for introductions, guys. Um, your unique features, obviously, are not only a selling point um, um, of the of your project, right? Um, it is also kind of your vision to the future of Web3 development um, and your ambition to provide, um, I suppose, the best experience possible to your end user. Uh, whether it's gaming or digital currency, obviously. Um, so I'll go into broader questions, a uh, question for now. Um, and I would like to know, how do you see the future 
of uh, decentralized finance and um, what is your role in shaping that future? Did you guys hear me? <laughs> uh, yes. So I will uh, take a stab at this. So how do we Go see the it. future in decentralized finance? Um, essentially, we see the future in decentralization it, as an interoperable feature. So like as we're going into the future, the new internet is going to allow us to connect to many different things across the internet in a fashion of I can be here and I can be everywhere at the same time, like your metaverse and that same wallet is going to be at the store and you're going to be able to kind of coexist and to interact with all these technologies. Um, and, and I just see that's where the future is going where I will soon have my credit card, essentially, and I'm going to be able to use my Bitcoin for it. Wait a minute, I can already do this. So the future is here. It's now just integ integrating all of it into the norm and allowing it to be used by everybody. Um, I, so in my mind, we're in the future. It's now just making it readily available. Totally agree with you. This is amazing. I can't, I actually, like... For me personally, even um, giving my background and where I am coming from, a uh, sanctioned country, right? It is very important for me to, um, for my family to uh, to have access to certain funds and to international payment system. For instance, this is just an example of like um, the future that uh, I look forward to in um, you know in my personal journey. So yeah, you've you've definitely hit the nail on this one. Kaspar, what do you reckon? Sure. So, you know, when we started Red Curry, um, we, we didn't know we were going to be decentralized or on using blockchain even. So our ideas span from doing something different in the traditional space of finance uh, with a mission to enable global access to stable, hard money. Um, you know, one thing led to another, and then we ended up using uh, blockchain technology and, and DeFi. Um, so it really well aligns our, with our vision uh, of how the world um, should be. Um, and we see DeFi future in a very similar place. And that place is to have a democratized, democratized finance offering a more you know, inclusive or transparent uh, services in the financial sector. So basically bypassing traditional financial intermediaries, promoting a more direct and equitable financial system, and ultimately, you know, providing a, an alternative uh, to the traditional money um and and making it accessible to everyone which is the key here right so whether that is access to stability whether that is access to real estate uh, or that is access to uh, financial services like lending or borrowing and um, yeah so i think it, it very well aligns with, with what our vision for red curry is and then we you know, we see that the DeFi is really supporting it and, and then empowering this as well. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Well, to follow up on your um, answer, I would just, um, I wonder if you guys potentially have the ability to become uh, one of um, stable coins, uh, let's say better than USDT or USDC, do you aim towards this direction or what's your vision? Now that is a very good question. So um, the short answer is it is in our um, back of our mind. And to really simplify this, the problem with, uh, with uh, stable coins today uh, is that you can't back them 100% by cash. That's You can't run a business like that. So you obviously need to diversify. So then you run into issues of, of are you really backed by or, or not? Um, what we see, what we can do with Red Curry is that as a Red Curry is backed fully by commercial real estate, um, we can run a sustainable business by being invested into real estate. Uh, we don't have to go anywhere else. 
Now, from there, we can use Red Curry to issue Euro stablecoins. So technically, we have ideas about doing this. Um, whether that will happen in the near future we, is to be seen, but it is definitely doable and we're thinking about it, yes. Brilliant, thank you. Well, um, let's uh, go back to Cyberlet, guys. Um, I have a question more uh, user-oriented. Um, can you explain and elaborate on user experience and how exactly Cyberlet works for uh, an end user? Uh, yeah, sure. So. In the beginning here, in the near future, we are trying to incorporate and do a thing called smart contracts, or not smart contracts, smart accounts, pardon me. Um, these are a new innovation uh, called EIP4337. So we're trying to make it very easy for users to sign up. Um, essentially, an email or a phone or your already decentralized wallet, whether it's MetaMask, all the way to Stargazer, you are able to sign up, make an account easy, and it creates a wallet that we're able to interact with on our application. This is pretty cool stuff. Um, this also gives you tools to like have account recoveries and some other nifty tools inside of that, like importing or exporting or doing some other cool things. So essentially, we're trying to make it a very under four click sign up process and keep it very easy while you're while we're onboarding users. As that is going on, it will be easy to then create a team and then join the tournaments. And then after you get paid for the tournament, it goes right to your account. And now it's in your account. You don't have to wait six months, like kind of like it's going on in the scene right now. People don't get paid for six months. This stuff will literally happen instantaneously with our smart contracts. That's awesome. I know that's a big thing in the space is uh, I think at the moment people are programmed for the delayed gratification of Web3 or crypto or or anything like that. It's a, uh, I think it's been programmed into us at this stage from a lot of projects that it's like I do stuff now, get stuff later, um, and that tends to be much later sometimes, which can can be uh, I, I suppose a huge spike meter for for fun in a lot of places. Um, it's really good to see that you know you're innovating to to make a change for that because I think it's necessary, uh, as, especially in that aspect. Uh, would you say? And I, I imagine it's very different for uh, Red Curry in that aspect. Like, how does that work for you guys with, um, I suppose, payments and things like that? Is, is that how it? When you're digitizing real world assets, for example, um, commercial real estate. Is there with that? Is there? Um, how would I say re like rental payments and things like that? Is that is that part of things that Red Curry handles on chain as well, or is that more so uh, off chain? Yeah, so you know we there's a lot to build here. Um, we want to focus on creating the infrastructure. So basically, we run a real estate fund of funds. We make those investments into the uh, the correct uh, commercial real estate. We use this as the collateral for the digital currency that we then issue. Um, that's what we focus on. Um, now we most likely have to build some of the use cases ourselves, and we're working with uh, on some of them. And that can be, for example, um, real estate deposit payments, where today you know an average um, length of a commercial real estate con uh, contract is five years. So on average, you have to deposit for for five years, and you see that uh, you get that money back after that contract ends. Um, that is a long time to be uh, stuck uh, in the deposit contract. Uh, with the inflation rate of today, you won't have much left. So for us, the, the, the low hanging fruit is to solve that, right? So use Red Curry instead, basically pay your deposits on Red Curry uh, and get it back after five years and it has been appreciated, it has appreciated. Um, there are, is, you mentioned the lending concept, right? So today, you know, I've been in the DeFi space for some time. Um, the biggest problem as a user I see from the lending side is the over collateralization. And that's quite massive there. Uh, the, the reason is because the underlying uh, collateral is volatile, right? The lenders don't take the risks, um, unnecessarily risk. 
risk. So with Red Curry, uh, once we achieve or as we achieve the stability, we can be under collateralized, right? So that, that is a big benefit compared to other cryptocurrencies. So there's many different use cases that can be used. Which of those we will build ourselves uh, is to be seen. We want to keep our focus right now. Uh, we are working with potential partners, um, lending platforms who would do that, who would provide that support, and then we would facilitate the um, adoption. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said, right now we're focusing on uh, building the infrastructure up and then creating the, creating the foundation for others to build on top of. And possibly pioneering some of the, uh, you know, piloting some of the use cases ourselves. Um, but to answer the original question as well, I mean, from the use case side, right, uh, we are as easy as, to use as Bitcoin, right? You you can buy Red Curry on, uh, on a, whether a, a central exchange or decentralized exchange and use it, use, use it as a, um, on any wallet. Um, so it, it behaves like any other cryptocurrency. Fantastic. Yeah, it's um oh sorry, you keep going. Oh yeah, I was just um yeah, given the uh development stages of both projects and um I just wanted to basically uh insert my two penny comment on interoperability and I wanted to ask if you guys feel um if you do feel that interoperability like the ability to go cross chain uh, will give you um an, e an edge against your competitors if that feature could potentially bring you like in front you and um yeah give you a massive advantage towards the competitive market um what do you reckon so um from the red curry side we you know we see cross um cross change strategy already key to us today so we are working on making red curry available on, on different blockchains so it's definitely um very important for us um especially when we talk about access as well so our mission is to be as accessible as possible and that would require us to be available on on different uh, different blockchain uh, and, and different service providers. Um, I think for us, interoperability also means the interoperability of on-chain and off-chain worlds. So bringing real-world revenue, like rental income, on-chain. So actually, when we issue Red Curry, uh, we also reinvest majority of the rental income back into Red Curry meaning that we bring the real world economy um, revenue on chain, right? So it will all be mirrored on, on in the value of, of Red Curry itself. Um, so yeah, this is a kind of a big topic to summarize in, in one minute, uh, but uh, for sure. So diverse use cases, uh, like I mentioned before, lending, uh, borrowing, um, deposit payments, uh, it will all require Red Curry to be cross-chain or multi-chain. Um, so, and today we are working on a cross-chain strategy. So it is very important for us. It's a, it's one of the more, I would say, one of the high priority um, topics that we are we are working on. Hey, let me. I'll jump in. Wonderful. Too. Thank you. Yeah, go for it, hey, please. Hi. Thanks for having me up. I'm James, uh, co-founder of Cyberlead Two. I don't want to let Jeff be the only one to talk. He's been uh, on calls all day. So I'm gonna step in a little bit. Um, I think right now, does this interoperability give us an edge? I think it gives us an edge and I think it gives every other company that's getting into Web3 an edge to be interoperable. Um, right now, the companies who have this one click sign up as a like Web2, when they're able to onboard their users into Web3, that's going to be a massive competitive edge because, as everyone knows, the communities are spread out. Um, not all blockchains are one. We have communities on Solana. We have block uh, communities in different sectors of eth Ether. Um, and it's the same way in gaming, especially. We have different platforms. We have you know, Steam. We have Epic Games. and 
different platforms. That's why right now, I think if anyone can tackle the interoperability part of it, they're going to be, you know, greatly ahead here in the future. And, you know, just a few years, interoperability is going to be commonplace and everybody will be interoperable. But at first, the ones who achieve it first and uh, do a good job with their UI, UX, and make the user flow uh, fluid and easy to understand intuitive functions, I think, uh, will not only make a gaming company excel, but any company coming into Web3 Excel. 100%. Um, yeah, given that we have two absolutely different projects on board today, right? Uh, however, um, like the unity within Web3 community and collaboration between projects with different abilities, different features and um, capabilities is so important. Do you guys, um, in your development stages as well, do you prioritize any like collaborative experiences or partnerships at the moment? Where are you at in terms of um, that? Um, so yeah, we're not just working with gaming companies we actually i'll tell you a few we're working with we're working now with constellation network they're a security company uh for the government um and also working with Vinavant. um they created a biometric system that we're using so these companies are in web3 like i said with the biometrics that's how we're verifying the gamers on our platform you know on twitter they they'll charge you for your blue check mark um, on Cyberly, you want to be a verified gamer, you scan your face with your webcam just as you would with your iPhone to log into your phone. And that just makes sure that you can't create another account. So you can't, you know, cheat in the game, get banned, create a new account, and do it all over again. I uh, kind of forgot what part of the question was, if you <laughs> could help me out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the partners and how we're working. Okay, so and the, the, so the other weird partner we have, well, I wouldn't say partner quite yet, but we are working with them as a, a drone industry partner. Um, so that has nothing to do with gaming at all. But how we made it work is, you know, we met them through a constellation. They're part of their network, and the guy he uh, he's very involved in drones, and he's working with major companies, uh, companies that deliver food and such. And so we worked with him. We're going to work with them to uh, bring that to our application. So, you know, you'll be able to have food delivered to your house and you'll be able to see that inside of the metaverse if you choose to. So that's kind of some of the ways that we're working with companies that aren't necessarily gaming companies, but they do have tools that we can use and we kind of met them just by being in the Web3 space. Lovely. Um, Kaspar, what you've got? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, obviously, there's when you start a company in, in Web3 or in, in any other industry, there's so much to build and you, you won't do it yourself alone. So how I see this is, uh, uh, is this different pockets, I would say, or groups of, of companies that we work with. So whether that is security. So for example, everything we do goes through uh, Fireblox. Uh, Fireblox provides us the security layer that we need, whether that is multi-signature policies or wallets, et cetera, We're working with them. Um, from the Oracle side, like we were talking about interoperability before, but we also, from the optical side of things, not just practical, but from the optical side of things, we also need to have third party Oracle mm -hmm. services that uh, showcase or distribute the, the underlying collateral value of, of Red Curry. So what is the value of the real estate, right? So we're working with uh, Chainlink on that side. From, from the cloud operational side, uh, we're running, um, you know, our cloud stack is not very heavy. But, uh, but it is still something. So we are in the in, in the Google programs, working with Google Cloud. They, they are helping us with, with, the, with the cloud technologies that we do need, that the part that is then the, the, is still centralized, right? Running like tradi more traditional stuff. 
um, from the distribution side. So Red Curry, we don't distribute ourselves. We issue and redeem Red Curry. So acting almost like a central bank, but we don't go directly to the customers ourselves. So we distribute to through distribution partners. So whether these are financial, uh, sorry, virtual asset providers or WASPs um, or their exchanges. Um, so we are working with, for example, CoinStore, BlockTrade. We're working with some of the five platforms uh, to provide the distribution side of things. Um, also then from the network and business development side, we are in, we are a member of our founding member of the web three chamber in Estonia. Um, and we're working with cockpit and, and some other uh, companies that help us to really, you know, get the foot through the door in, in many places and then blockchains, right? I mean, uh, uh, Big help for us and, and kind of a mutual benefit, I suppose, for everybody is to, to collaborate closely with different blockchains, like uh, let's say layer one X, right? So the, 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 what you guys are doing in the interoperability space is really uh, helps projects like, like Red Curry uh, to be more um, easily accessible to the, to the general public. So, so yeah, so we are working and this list is definitely incomplete and, and uh, we're, we're looking forward to, to working with more and more, more partners. Yeah, absolutely. I think from a partnership point of view, uh, Web3 is very advanced in the sense that I think we know that, you know, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Uh, and we're building off each other to create a, a better networked effect of things that can put to, to plug the interoperability that are interoperable with each other. Uh, and that, that's very important, I think, for a strong ecosystem just across the board. Uh, so it's good to see that, you know, partnerships obviously play a large part in, in both the projects that you guys have. Um, just to, to, I suppose, dive in a little bit further to the, uh, the tech side of things. Uh, can we get some insights into the into the tech stack that you know that Cyberly that powers you guys, um, even Red Curry, the stuff that, that powers you? Look, what are the what are the things you have to have as a minimum setup in order for your product to work? And I, I hope that that question makes sense. Um, that that might take us on a bit of a journey, but I'm I'm here for it. We'll see we'll see how we go. Sure, I'll, uh, great question. Um, awesome. So there's a lot that goes on underneath the hood. Um, I will say that. Um, on the tech side of, of Cyberly, um, we have a bunch of servers that we buy, have to buy essentially, and that hosts our front end, our back end, and then we have an application layer, and then we also have security things, we have AI ML stuff, we have storage for things. Um, essentially, there is a lot underneath the hood for the tech stack, but nothing's really changing because it's all typically the same infrastructure that we all use for everything. The only difference here is what blockchain are we plugging in to the traditional tech stack? Um, as of now, we are doing Ethereum and we are also building it in such a way that we're interoperable and using Constellation and we're talking to other chains in the meantime. Um, and we are kind of making it work for all of it. So when people come in, they can utilize every chain, not just one chain or the other chain, essentially the interoperability side. So as of now, our tech stack is traditional, like everybody else's, and we're adding Ethereum and Constellation to our tech stack. Constellation in the near future is a metagraph that we use. There's a layer one metagraph. So it's a layer one blockchain. It's our own blockchain. And we will use that for things that we need to do for scaling. At first, it's going to be a mutable history of all of the game tournaments that are on, this, on the site or leagues or events. So now we know what players join and leave teams, what teams join the tournaments, their stats, and it's never going away. Why we're doing this? Well, gaming data is deleted all the time. History is left. You got Microsoft, Xbox, I mean, deleting all of 360 stuff here soon. So everybody's history is just going away. 
So that means if you were a competitor or did have insights or trophies or stuff, that's just gone. I am personally affected by this. A lot of the history that I started with years ago um, is just being deleted here soon. So that means if I don't save it or if I didn't know about that, I wouldn't have access to it. And this is this is not good. So we use these we use these different tech stacks to contribute to the overall platform of creating this creator ecosystem that we're trying to do for gamers. Yeah, I think you know it's a thing that's probably not much touched on is the you, here's the thing: how does it actually work? What what are the capabilities and backends that have to go to it? Um, yeah, over to you, Casper uh, Redco. Tell me uh, what what infrastructure, what things do you need from a technological um, stack that that powers your project? Yeah. So when we decided to use decentralized finance uh, or, or TLT technologies for for Red Curry, then one of the key decisions or principles, the principal decisions we made was that we will build as much as possible on chain. Um, and the, for, the reason is this, you know, the reason is transparency. Ultimately, when you're building a currency, uh, then the adoption of that currency is tightly coupled with the trust um, towards that currency. And trust can be you know achieved through transparency that's one part of it right um so our stack is heavily on chain uh, we have uh, uh, we have the token contract obviously but that is quite a vanilla uh, erc20 uh, contract we also have an asset contract that where we track the entire collateral on chain so you will be able to and you you will see today all the assets that Red Curry has as collateral on chain, so there anybody, it's, so it, it's publicly auditable, right? All the data is there, and we also reference links to off-chain sites. So whether these are national registries, etc., so you can double check the ownership of these assets, and whether our foundation is the owner of it or not. We publish that data then on chain through a more traditional. Uh, web interface or DAP. Um, so that is kind of the off-chain technology. So we built this uh, back office system that is uh, the co connected with our uh, contracts through Fri Fireblocks uh, uh, secure kind of a, a thing that they offer, not getting into the details, but basically everything goes through Fireblocks so they will be able to, it's not so easily uh, so basically, nobody can write their private keys somewhere, and then if those get lost, then we are screwed, right? It's all, it's all MPC technology uh, in terms of wallets, and um, and then finally, um, to kind of put this all together, we have another smart contract, which we call the Governor Smart Contract, and basically, what happens is that you cannot issue or redeem Red Curry. Uh, directly, you have to go to through the governor, and that is also open source uh, smart contract that is running on on blockchain. And basically, what it does in a simplified way is it, it checks what's our collateral on chain, and then it decides how much and if it can issue red curry or redeem it for that matter. Um, so even if I want to issue red curry you know, without maybe changing the collateral, I cannot. So it all has to first go into buying real estate, issuing that on chain so that everybody can see, and then and only then can Red Curry be issued. Um, that is a kind of a very simplified way of, of expl explaining it, but uh, more or less, uh, I would say like 80% is on chain and 20% is off chain. Um, and then uh, one more part, which is more like a traditional thing, we have an application. Not everybody can go on on uh, I don't know on, on scanners, uh, blockchain scanners, and, and read smart contract data. Obviously, it's it's not that easy. So we built uh, an explorer. So we call it Red Code Explorer, and uh, that reads data directly from on chain and displays it in a nice visual way. Uh, so you can see what assets are backing Red Curry. What is the worth of those assets? You can see history as well. So the change of these assets. And of course, you can also see the audits that are being done to these uh, assets. So we follow uh, regulatory requirements like any other uh, fund. Uh, fund. Um, and uh, we also issue 
the audit reports uh, on chain so you can you will be able to see which uh, assets have been audited and when and you can then we can reference to the audit reports also um, so we're really trying to build this uh, very very transparent system and the only way we really saw how to do it was to build open source and to build on on chain All right, that's a great answer um you know that the yeah it was just a great answer i was just they're trying to process so many things there you know you know did you have uh, something to throw in yeah absolutely um i remember the very first time when we um had a chat with uh, Kaspar, with Red Curry guys. And um, I remember the emphasis on transparency, on uh, accessibility for end user. And most importantly, it's the uh, the easy way, introducing the easy way for, for a user who might not be that tech savvy, you know, and have still have access to information, to comprehensive um, analysis of what's happening on chain, uh, what's happening to transactions. And, um, you know, uh, it is very important for, you know, just end users, for normal people, <laughs> as I, I classify myself definitely, um, to have that simplicity and usability um, within Web3 experience that at the moment sometimes comes across quite complicated, a bit scary, a bit dangerous, you like security and stuff. So yeah, this is brilliant. Kudos to you guys and um, yeah. Just a, a question to build on top of that. Um, you know, I think these tie into each other with the tech stack, but obviously then working in with uh, something that's very current recently, which is regulatory compliance. And I think this one's very specific for Red Curry, but I'd be really interested to see, uh, so I believe what your take is on it as well. Um, how do you navigate that? How do you navigate knowing that there is regulatory considerations across different areas, um, domains, jurisdictions? How do you remain compliant? Is it like uh, we're, we're coming to a point, I think, where we can't keep operating in, in gray areas, which I think crypto does really well. Uh, but we know that long term, obviously, there, there will have to be some level of compliance for, um, you know, for continued growth and adoption. Uh, how does how does that fit into both of your projects? For us, as Cyberly, uh, we don't mess around at all. That's we. Uh... We have very experienced lawyers who guide us on what to do. And to put it in short, a big part of the answer is to have utility. So everything you're doing is utility. Um, you don't have a token to have a token just so the price will go up and that people will buy it and hopes the price will go up. No, you have a token because... You have a use case for that token. You have, there's things you're trying to accomplish with the token, whether it be using the token to tip people online on a side lead application, to join a tournament or, you know, anything. As long as I think the main takeaway is get a lawyer who knows what they're talking about and don't cheap out on the lawyer and everything you do, just keep utility on, on your mind. Yeah, great answer. Um, yeah, Casper, I'd be really interested to hear from your guys' perspective, obviously having real-world assets as well. Um, over to you. So, yeah, the, if you look at the fundamental concept of Red Curry, which is an alternative means of payment, uh, it is to appreciate in value as well. And how to do that without becoming a security was the, was the question here for us when we started it. Even before we decided to put in the fifth gear and go full speed. We, we worked a year on the regulatory side to make sure that, you know, we don't build everything and then realize that it's still a security, right? So that was the, the key question here. Um, so, you know, we, we are operating in Europe. We are uh, issuing uh, Red Curry in EU. Uh, so we took and we, we look at that at the laws of, of uh, EU and the financial instrument directive uh, 
uh, was the like MIFID II, uh, which was kind of the uh, it, it literally means the EU financial instrument directive, which was then the draft was on our table a couple of years ago, and then we aligned ourselves uh, accordingly. And now it's also now it's more mature. It's being put into law. And uh, yeah, we have uh, we are following that MIFID II regulation. Um, Red Curry does not fall under the definition of a security. Uh, it also has been confirmed through extensive uh, independent legal reviews. Um, we are working with uh, major uh, law firms. Uh, have been working with them for years. Uh, we have uh, one of our founders uh, has a very strong legal background also. Um, so we are not a security. We could uh, be considered then unregulated, but uh, that would obviously not be preferred, right? So we were looking at ways of what we are rather than what we are not, which was also important. Uh, so we fall under what it's called as an alternative. Um, uh, it's, it's basically an instrument of payment, right? Um, an alternative to a legal tender, basically. Uh, instruments of payment, uh, they are regulated, um, but not by securities acts. Uh, it's it's rather by banking sector acts. So we are designed to be fully uh, to to fully comply with banking sector regulations, and so uh, we because of that, uh, and this is what I mentioned before, uh, we have to uh, distribute through financial institutions or licensed financial service providers uh, that also are uh, compatible with. Or comply with uh, banking sector acts. So, as an infrastructure, just to summarize that. So, as an infrastructure developer, uh, we are creating a means of payment, an instrument of payment that we then uh, distribute through uh, a, a fully licensed service provider, and we don't fall uh, according to the latest European laws fall under uh, any security. Um, what it will mean to the global uh, or the, the, the outside of EU is uh, is uh, as as long as we issue and redeem and operate in Europe, people can use Red Curry outside as well. It does not affect where you are, where you buy it. Um, it will rather uh, af affect who will be distributing it. So, for example, if we sell uh, Red Curry in Australia, uh, we would then have to distribute it through. Uh, a financial service provider then operates in Australia and is regulated by the Australian law, but we are still, as the issuer in Europe, uh, are still falling under the MFD2 and the banking sector here. Um, so, yeah, so that is pretty, um, it's quite covered in, that was the first thing we did. And then maybe finally on that note, um, we, we also have uh, kind of ties in to how Redcore is built up and the whole transparency question. Um, you know, we are owned or the collateral is owned by a foundation. Uh, so, and the foundation itself is renounced. So the, it is an ownerless structure. Uh, there are no ultimate beneficiaries um, and that can be achieved. There are, are laws in place from 1991, the Austrian uh, law of private foundations, for example, uh, that states that this can be done. So you can have a foundation, renounce it, be completely ownerless and still have assets under it. And uh, it has been used by wealthy families, by different foundations for for 30 years now. Um, so, uh, which ultimately what it does, it makes the Red Curry token itself the ultimate beneficiary because there is no other owner. It's only you. If you own Red Curry, you, you are the ultimate, you know, the Red Curry token itself is the ultimate beneficiary. Um, so yes, a lot was packed into this sensor, uh, which we have been working for many years, but I uh, hope that that didn't make things more complicated <laughs> than uh, than it already is. Uh, sometimes they're the best answers, I think, the ones where you know it's a it's an in depth question, um, well, uh, well, a light question at the surface, but an in depth answer, so to speak, because it's uh, it really drags into what is you know what are the the necessities for creating um, something to work properly in order for it to be compliant, in order for us to, to as as users, et cetera, to be able to see that there's a lot of thought pattern that goes into it as well. Um, and there's a lot of diligence. And uh, it's really good to hear from, you know, both projects that it, that's at the forefront as well of the project is 
obviously being compliant, obviously being um, on that cutting edge of what is the possibilities and what are the capabilities inside the regulation. So I think that's fantastic. Um, just conscious of time, I think we'll um, we'll start our, our wrap up there. So just a just a closing statement, I think from from each project, um, and then we'll do our closeouts. I know it's a you know it's a well it's a Friday in most places anyway. I, mean, I know here in Australia it's a holiday. So let's uh, let's keep uh, on top of our timings and let's get a closing statement from each project. Hey, sorry. sorry. I, yeah, I have, go ahead. Sorry. No, I just I have multiple tabs open. <laughs> I'm listening here, and I had to find the tab to unmute myself. Um, well, I, there was a question in the chat. I want to address that real quick, and it was how does Cyberlead address cheating and fraud associated with online gaming? Um, let me answer that, and I'll end. Uh, we we address it by proving that the user behind the computer or electronic device is a human so we're able to map out the human activity how they operate their keyboard and mouse and their digital device we're able to create a fingerprint for them basically and each user is different um you can put a hundred users all playing the the same game or using the same applications and they all have different signatures and so when they do something that breaks their signature you can kind of look at your thumb and then press your other thumbnail against your thumb and you'll see like a straight line across your thumbprint. And when we look at the data visually, that's how obvious it is that, it, that someone's cheating in that game. And so we address it first with our AI anti-cheat and secondly with our biometric player verification system. That way when you sign up and you become a verified player, uh, if you do get caught cheating, you're not able to just create another account and continue robbing people in our platform. And just to kind of close out, um, thanks for having us on. Uh, we're big fans of Layer One X, uh, and you know, thanks for having us. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure to, to have you guys here. Like I said, uh, at the start, it's it's always great to be able to dive into those uh, into your projects and get that real insight um, from from founders as well. So we appreciate having you here, Casper. Uh, um, yeah, thanks. So we, you know, I'll close what with what with what I started. Uh, I think together we are unstoppable. I, I think the um, I think the goal here. For, for all for many DeFi services is to put you in control of finances to help you foster a fairer and more inclusive monetary system. I think this is uh, what you know this is definitely what we are doing in the in the crypto space and I believe many other DeFi companies and platforms are doing as well. So I think um, collaboration here is very important um, to, to really see through the modern or, or the current financial uh, system and then see what can actually be achieved as well if we think uh, two steps ahead. Um, I think what we're doing is a testament to the potential of what can be done when you merge traditional assets with modern technologies like Layer 1X, right? So, yeah, I would, you know, just uh, thank you, Layer 1X, for, for having us here, for giving us this platform to, to um, reach out to the world. Um, and uh, yeah, let's nudge the, the monetary system together uh, one step at a time. Um, we do have a money renaissance program going on right now. So if anybody wants to join, um, uh, go to our website, um, take part. It's, it's quite a, it's, it's not very intense. Uh, so you, we don't expect you to, to work, <laughs> but you can join our uh, renaissance program there are many benefits there different airdrops uh, different uh, club invitations or invitation only club systems that we have uh, so getting in early uh, there are definitely different perks and and rewards uh, coming up uh, more on our website about that and uh, thanks again uh, layer one x for having us on and uh, looking forward to the next ones Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, jump in. yeah, thank you, Joe. Uh, okay, a quick 
uh, closing statement from me as well. Um, I personally really appreciate your collaboration, your cooperation, your friendships and response to my constant bugging <laughs> of like, do you want to come on our session? <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate you. Um, you always have an amazing input, always have something to share with the audience. And, you know, um, together we grow fast, uh, we grow strong, and, um, yeah, onwards and upwards. Um, I will be dropping the all the website links in the comments. Um, please, guys, follow um, um, Cyberlet and uh, Red Curry's socials hand, uh, social handles sorry and also visit their website uh, there is cyberlet.io there is redcurry.co uh, also if you or you know of any projects who would like to participate in our a AMA sessions uh, in our open discussions fully powered by layer 1x uh, we only want your presence uh, and insights um, please go on www.xtalksama.com and uh, submit a form we will be more than happy to get in touch with you find out who you are and uh, invite you over so thank you so much also one more important note please follow our discord jump on our discord join our community we've got some really good perks going on and uh, yeah links are all dropped in comments section thank you very much from me thank you for making my first ever experience on twitter spaces so wonderful and uh yeah thank you for listening to my shaky voice uh, it's a pleasure to have you here you know and i know the first one's always the the rip the band-aid experience uh if you've never done spaces or, or uh live q a i guess it's a it's definitely something for the resume you know it's a, it's if you've never done it and you're up here trying to present um, for anybody in the audience, it does get better. I promise the, the shaky things go away. Um, yeah. So no, but once again, thanks everybody for being here. We really appreciate having you as a part of the community and not just our community, but the cyberly community as well as the red curry community um, listening in and getting all the info. Uh, we will see all of you on the next one. We do have our, um, you know, our X talk AMAs are a regular thing. So, Stay, stay in touch with our socials. We'll have them all uh, across there. You know, we update it regularly. Um, uh, as Ina said, jump in the Discord. And of course, uh, jump in the, in any of the links Discords for Cyberlead and also for Red Curry as well. Um, as we said, if we want to go uh, far, we go together. And that's what we're all about. Just building, building the platform, building the rails so that all of us can be successful through 2024 and into the future. So once again, thanks everybody for being here. And we will catch you all on the next one. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Ciao, everybody.